Rick Davis and Leslie Sanchez are in Greenville. Rick is a CBSN political contributor and the former campaign manager for John McCain. Leslie is a Republican strategist and also a CBSN political contributor. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Leslie, uh, let's start with you. What are you expecting to see tonight? What issues, what battles? Sure, sparks are definitely going to fly. And when you're talking to a lot of the voters here in South Carolina, many of them will tell you they're still undecided. There is a strong appeal. You cannot deny it for Donald Trump. But you're certainly seeing a lot of movement with Marco Rubio and Senator Ted Cruz and, and certainly Bush and McCain. It's interesting with the PAC. There's a big note that came out this morning from a former speaker, Newt Gingrich, who was defending John Kasich on his, on his uh, national defense bona fides. He feels he was under attack by the Jeb Bush campaign. You certainly have Ted Cruz saying that he's been under attack. That is what is consistent. It's falling on the issues of faith and family, those social conservatives and national security. So it's definitely going to be an interesting debate. Rick, what are you going to be looking for tonight? Well, you know, South Carolina is known for its uh, love of politics as a blood <laughs> sport. So I expect we're going to see a lot of mixing it up around here. And uh, as Leslie said, there are already attack ads all over the state. Uh, and, and they've engaged verbally, too, on the stump. We saw yesterday all kinds of uh, back and forth between the candidates uh, with some really poignant attacks, probably more so on Trump. Uh, it looks like everybody's focused on bringing him back to the pack. He's got a sizable lead in most surveys here, and the question's going to be, can he hold on to that? Uh, yeah, Leslie, on that point, how big a target do you think Donald Trump will be tonight? A tremendous amount. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about it. I think the only person with uh, that more people are interested in following is Frank Underwood because he signs for Netflix. Uh, the new House of Cards are flying around <laughs> everywhere. And that he's is, up for re-election. And he's up for re-election. Rick Davis is applying for the job. Just kidding. Just Thanks. kidding. But in all fairness, it's been a very surreal dynamic between reality TV star, you know, and businessman Donald Trump, and then you have the House of Cards here, and then you have all these candidates in traditional Republican politics. So. It's definitely making it interesting, and it, and it really is. There's a, there's a soberness to the South Carolina voters who are really trying to measure who would be the best president, and they're looking at the strong, no-nonsense no appeal of Donald Trump and definitely the national security prowess of Senator Ted Cruz and uh, Marco Rubio is what we hear. It's interesting. I don't hear as much about Jeb Bush, about the governor, as you would think, but it's still too early to tell. Uh, Rick, let me ask you, uh, though, about Marco Rubio. Uh, what does the senator need to do following his performance in the last debate? I think as far as individual effort, he's got the highest bar to uh, get over. He, he excelled in his campaign in the debates leading up to the New Hampshire debate just a week ago. And when he, when he gaffed, when he froze up, when he got into this exchange with Christie that made him look really silly, uh, it really hurt him. And there's no question that that affected the numbers that he got in New Hampshire. This is his next opportunity to, to fix that problem. He even said in his New Hampshire speech the night of the election that he took the responsibility for that, that accident on stage uh, personally. And so tonight is his chance for redemption. Can he redeem himself on the stage when everybody else is throwing elbows and mixing it up? It's going to be a hard environment to do that, but he's done well in previous debates, so the question is, how's he going to do here? His biggest challenge, though, is to not look like a robot. That was the criticism. He's very tightly scripted and does extremely well with it, but how, how's the loose, easygoing Marco Rubio going to look tonight? Yeah, Leslie, what about yeah. that point? You know, I think the, the, the most amount of heat that Senator Rubio is going to face tonight is going to be on this issue of immigration. Again, uh, a lot of individuals that we hear say they like Donald Trump because he looks like he wants to solve this immigration problem. If you think back to New Hampshire, that did not come up as a top issue. It was more dealing with jobs and the economy uh, and, you know, certainly the idea of taking on Washington. Immigration is going to be key. And there is this, this flip-flop uh, label with Senator Rubio. So he's going to have to address that. It's going to be coming in very hot and very uh, heated from Senator Cruz on that issue. That's where he's built a lot of his campaign. And Trump is going to ride that wave. I think that's what's going to be interesting about it on that particular issue. Uh, Rick, let me ask you, who do you think the next to go will be? We saw the departure this past week of Chris Christie, Carly Fiorina, and Jim Gilmore. Who do you think is next? Yep. 
Well, you know, it depends on the outcome Saturday uh, a week from today. I believe that the people who are sort of hanging in there, both financially and electorally, are uh, John Kasich. I think that, that he, he, he performed well in New Hampshire, but his numbers here are lackluster. And if he comes in uh, uh, last place or near Carson, uh, I think that could be the end of his campaign. I would say Carson is the biggest question mark. He continues to raise funds, he continues to do well with small donors, but he doesn't seem to be picking up any votes along the way now. And so uh, he's got a slightly different problem where he could fund his campaign going forward, but he may not be getting any votes in the process. I want to talk more about uh, the governor, uh, Governor Kasich. How does he appeal to South Carolina voters, given the political landscape in South Carolina and given his own positions, Leslie? What are we likely to hear? You know, it's interesting because Governor Kasich has, has been kind of on his back, uh, his back uh, legs kind of pushed back and, and, to, and having to defend his national security uh, record, which is really not a place I think he expected to be. When you have to bring out the, the former winner of the 2012 South Carolina G GOP primary, Newt Gingrich, to defend your record when you were working in Congress, uh, that's not really the best use of your resources. He's also been focused on other states. He knew South Carolina was not a place he was going to perform well, but he does have have a good record on national security and it's not an area uh, of weakness he thought he'd have to see. I think what's also interesting, you're seeing a lot of tweets and social media coverage from operatives within the Bush campaign or the Bush apparatus saying, you know, it's time to get out. Let's put the momentum behind Governor Bush. So there's definitely political pressure, a little bit of dirty tricks, um, and, and just kind of the, the onslaught of what becomes a competitive primary in South Carolina. So yeah. it's not what they expected. Yeah, Elaine, I, I would say uh, uh, to reinforce what Leslie is saying, uh, South Carolina has the largest per capita retired military uh, individuals in the country by a state. So they like their national security red meat. And so that's a big debate here around the state. Who's going to give us security? Who's going to fight ISIS? Who's going to make us secure? And so, so that's a real challenge for, for John Kasich. And I think that's why they brought out Newt Gingrich was to bolster that up. But no one's ever thought of Newt Gingrich is an expert on national security. So <laughs> it's the kind of thing that it looks like he's struggling a little bit to get his footing on that issue. You know, there's another little piece of interesting news today as well, and that's three Texas newspapers have come out to endorse anybody but Senator Ted Cruz. Um, I think there's been a lot of spin from the Cruz campaign saying, well, you know, we didn't really expect the establishment newspapers to support their uh, junior senator. But at the same time, it, came, it created an opportunity for two newspapers supporting uh, Governor Bush to say, look, I have exactly the bona fides to be the next GOP president, the next president. And uh, and it certainly for G Governor Kasich got the endorsement of the Dallas Morning News. It gives him at least a little bump. Uh, I'm curious for both of you, um, whoever wants to start, on the issue of Republican donors, what has uh, the performance of these candidates uh, in Iowa and in New Hampshire, both on the debate stage and at the polls, what has that done for the big Republican donors who were perhaps trying to figure out where it is that they should put the majority uh, of their bets? Because the landscape certainly changed, many would say, coming out of New Hampshire, particularly when you look at uh, Senator Marco Rubio. Uh, Leslie, why don't I start yeah. with you? Or whoever wants to start. Sure, I mean, I would say immediately following the New Hampshire primary when there was new life uh, back into Governor Casey's campaign, you get notes from some big bundlers of individuals in the Republican Party who raised tremendous, amount, tremendous amounts of money, such as Fred Davis, who came out and said, look, uh, there's an opportunity here. Let's ride it. I know you've been waiting. It was all of those folks that, that Rick and I had talked about that were on the fences, wanted to support Governor Kasich, just didn't see the momentum. Those emails were firing out to look for those dollars. There have been many individuals sitting on the sidelines as well within Governor Bush's campaign that just didn't know whether they could be released, as they said, to go support other candidates who had momentum. I think right now everybody's just staying put. I think Bush was able to secure his donor base and they stayed. Uh, Marco Rubio has additionally picked up endorsements that help secure and create a little bit of momentum. Senator Ted Cruz has gone a different route, not necessarily with the endorsements, but with the individual small contributions and the party activists who are the ones who get out and vote. So it's a different strategy, different approach, but it's all about the money. Yeah, Elaine, I, I agree. I think that there's a tremendous amount of dry powder uh, in the Republican establishment waiting to have someone emerge as a candidate that they can back. And they're not going anywhere until this field went us down. And my guess is that you're not going to see the surge of their cash come into anybody's campaign 
probably until mid-March when the Florida primary occurs and somebody emerges there who is a establishment candidate who can challenge Cruz and Trump in the ongoing primaries. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this before, but how long can these five main candidates really stick around? Well, I, I think they're all running out of money now. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the, the media buying, even in this state, uh, from the campaigns of Kasich and, and Bush and, 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 and Rubio is pretty weak. And so uh, the question is going to be, can they husband their resources, make it through uh, the March 1st to March 15th uh, primaries, all in these southern states, 13 different primaries, in order to get to a place where they can, they can have a clear win, a, a, a state like Florida where it's winner take all and they can beat all comers. I, I really don't think you're going to see a consolidation until then because they have, they have enough money to make it to the next state but they don't have enough money to really run robust campaigns, which frankly goes to advantage Trump and Cruz, who continue to have strong fundraising appeal from their bases, very loyal supporters, and they continue to uh, wage active campaigns in those out states. All right, Rick Davis and Leslie Sanchez, thank you both so much for your insight. Thanks a lot.